Ladies and gentlemen, RXF presents three five-minute rounds of mixed martial arts in the featherweight bout. Introducing first in the blue corner, fighting out of Bucharest, Romania, weighing in at 66 kilograms with a professional record of two fights, one win and one loss, Florin Stucario! <laughs> Across the cage, his opponent stands in the red corner, fighting out of Cluj Napopka, Romania, weighing in at 66 kilograms with an undefeated record of one fight and one win. Sergio Maris! Let's get down to business. All right, here we go. These featherweights are locked, stocked. You both load the roof. Now on a clean, hard fight. Touch gloves if you want. Go back to your corner. Go back. Always oh, nice to see a little bit of respect between the fighters. Judge. I will just put that on hold as soon Judge. as that cage door closes and we're good to go. Judge. Time. Are ready? Are ready? Definitely Fight. a noticeable size discrepancy here between these two. Mr. Gary, who definitely looks big for a, for a featherweight. Yeah, you can see his much larger frame there. I wonder if he'll try and utilize that reach, try and keep his opponent at the end of his punches. But you can see just as he's coming in there, opponent ready to fire back. Marish has quick hands. Marish in the red gloves, Strigato in the blue. Both guys just kind of feeling, feeling out the distance a little bit, finding the rhythm. That's a nice stiff popping jab. <laughs> Swing and a miss there from Marish. Definitely had some power in it, but not perhaps as much control as needed. And we'll see who really truly draws first blood here. Uh, we've just seen one jab land, but nothing really substantial. And sometimes all it takes is one punch to really change the whole story of a fight. I mean, I feel like Marish looks a little tense. Come on, let's work, work, work! Whereas, uh, oh, bag over, Hans! And he landed, but there was that power we were talking about. Go straight from a takedown, it's just... He needs to be wary of the guillotine here from Stragari, who pops out of it, does well to disengage. May think twice about running in like that, now that he knows that his opponent does have that grappling ready to go. Stragari looks calm. I, I like the composure that he showed there. I mean, yeah, he got clipped, but he managed to defend accordingly as well. Nice, hard body kick there. Applied from... Morais there. He's very much standing with in the kicking range of his opponent. Oh, oh one, nice two. combination. <laughs> he really just seemed to have measured that distance and has that uh, has that distance management locked in. Yeah, because not, it's not it's much easier said than done using that distance. I mean, it's it's not just about having long arms and a big frame. I mean, you really got to make sure better works with your rhythm, works with the combinations you're throwing. And so far, so good for Stugario. You see that every time Stugario lands, he almost like lands, gets himself right back out of the pocket because he doesn't want to spend time in there with such a strong, compact fighter like Marais. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some of those some of those heavy-handed counters come uh, come Stugario's way now, and. I mean, despite being pretty young in his MMA career, definitely showing some ex experience in Kojovar. And wow, nice shots there landed from Stragario. Beautiful single leg drives through it, gets the takedown, transitions in the side control. Stragario just very much hanging on now. And this is where we're at Sambo base, would be very good. Uh, from Sugario's corner. Let's see if he can manage to turn this around. He needs to get up onto his hip and try and turn in towards Marais. Almost shrimp out and try and reclaim the likes of half guard, reclaim the likes of full guard, but right now he's flat backing and he can't do a lot offensively from this position. Knee on the belly, transitions in the oh, mark, but sweat! He's sweet there from Sugario. It seemed like he knew something we didn't. He was perhaps baiting even uh, Marish a bit there, going to the mount. But he seemed too calm. And now he's inside the close guard of Marais. Marais trying to lock up the neck here. Mario, you may see him posturing here on landing strikes. Momentarily, Marais tried to get on the Kimura. Good stable control from Stugari, not leaving himself open, not leaving himself open for submissions or anything like that, but I do think he will start firing away some hard shots soon. Because nice as of right now, shots. yeah, most, most of the uh, happens is actually coming from Marais. Nice little pot shots and elbows off the bottom. And you can see he's trying to open up his guard. He's trying to be offensive, but Stregario right now trying to do the right thing by pushing him up against the cage. You can see there's always a little, little element of danger every time you see Marais opening up that guard. Absolutely. And he's definitely the more active fighter right now. I mean, 
Sugaru did a very nice job sweeping there, but he hasn't necessarily accomplished as much from top position so far. Watch out for potential arm bar. Come on, you have to work. see him work. trying to shift his hips to the outside. Tried to grab pound. Hard hand fist there. Oh, they are huge. We need to see some movement from Barash. Right. He's getting caught in these positions. He managed to neutralize a little bit, but wow, we did not need to see that much from Stagari before things got really dangerous for his opponent. I'd like to see him break and try and posture up a little bit so we can get a little bit more purchase on these Come shots. On, work. Work. And here we go. Let's see. These are big shots. I don't know if it's because we're, we're in a, a closed off arena, but you can hear these shots yeah. thundering off. I feel like we can feel them over here. It's like he's trying to build a house with those hammer fists. <laughs> This from a, a relatively slow start. This seems to be the kind of fight you can really get your teeth into, Seb. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen a lot of variety. We've seen I do a little pot shot elbows. I like that even off his bike, you can see Maurice trying to land off some work. shots, trying absolutely. to score points. Staying very active. Huh? Uh, honestly, good round for both. They both had their moments. Obviously, I think Strigari will get that one well on account of the top position that he had and some of the striking combinations. But I like a lot of the stuff we're seeing from Sergio Maurice as well. Here we see in the replay that it's almost as if uh, he was forced to close the distance here to try and land something. So he had to take a couple of shots, but beautiful range management and distance control from Stragario landing those straight shots at will. Just shy with that. A front hand uppercut. But then you can see that just sparking into life with those big shots and those hammer fists. Unfortunately, when someone is the hammer, someone has to be the nail. Absolutely, and we all know which one is more fun out of those two. And Strigario still looks calm. There's something about his demeanor that's just, yeah, he seems very relaxed. Realistically, Sebastian, if you're in the corner there of Marais, what are you saying to him? What are you telling him he needs to do differently leading into the second round? Well, I mean, he definitely did ride in, in uh, Seconds up. cutting off the distance a little bit. Seconds up. Like he could have done it a little bit better, but the combinations were a little bit wild. Come on, seconds up. Down, Stadio Stadio there, Stadio Stadio Stadio. a little bit reckless, a little bit sloppy, and I think if he just sets up his combinations a little bit more, leading with a few more jabs, maybe some leg kicks, to sort of just Come add on. some variety to striking uh, offense, then I think that will definitely seconds lead up. to some good uh, to some good clinch work and possibly a takedown. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the very first time tonight at RXF 38, Pipe. we go to the second round. And that is telling. <laughs> definitely been some fast-paced action here. Let's see who can pick up a second, a good start to the second round. You can see Marais already is already implementing level changes in Fiends, trying to give Stragario some different looks. Stragario again with those straight shots. He's again, a desperation yeah. shot. Can he just stop He's got it, oh, yeah. mm. right at the side. Mm. And he's definitely caused a little bit of uh, nosebleed there from Sugario. Let's see what Maurice can do from this position because he wasn't necessarily super successful in the first round, but this is a great position and he could definitely turn things around. I think he's realized from that uh, that first transition. Oh, he's almost oh. setting up the head on if he, he can get his head to the other side, but then he gets transitioned again, showing perhaps a little bit of relative inexperience and not solidifying the position before trying to transition to a submission. And that is a bit of a rookie move. You get in the advantageous position and you just sort of like the adrenaline kicks in and you know you don't necessarily secure a position before you move on to the next one. Now we've got Sugari with a lot of time to work the top position and we saw how heavy some of those hammer fists were. And you can see he's just turning over the hips every time, putting a little bit more tor torque sorry, into his shots. Trying to keep the hips as square as possible. Man on the bottom of Reich with the grapevines momentarily. May use that to try and set up work. some sort of sweep. Work. Right now the guard is very much open. Yeah. I just wonder how well. Look at the nose. Opening up. That's leaking more than a badly installed outside tap. <laughs> Absolutely. And it, could, it could affect the fight. I mean, it does affect your breathing. Mm -hmm. Great point. It's, no, it's definitely nothing that you want heading into a third round. So, I mean, I would, if I were Strigari, I would definitely try to go for a finish at this point because you don't want that going against you. Say you're, you're up two rounds mm -hmm. and then something like that affects your fight, maybe just gets you off balance enough for whatever guy to land a strike. But he is landing some good ground and pound here from top position and in a very low 
uh, position here from guard. He's tried that. Up he's tried. He's tried that elevator sweep a couple of times. Sagara has been wise to it and got the hips nice and low each time. But I'd like to see him try and work to again get on the side, try and get that knee shield in and work a sweep from there. Because what if you've tried something once, twice, and it's not working? It's at that stage you need the move. And wow, look, that's about five or six hard hammer hits that landed from Stragario. They are right in front of us here in commentary, and you can just hear the thud off them. Like a stick to the heart, those are thunderous. <laughs> and he was basically just impaling his opponent barrel post strikes. The joke wasn't good, but it also wasn't Vlad. <laughs> See, maybe trying to set up an arm bar here. He has both arms locked up, but in order to do that, he needs to let go of these grapevines, bring the guard up a little higher and try and work from there. His hips need to be that little bit more active. Eventually, just going from this sequence of having the grapevines in, flattening out, Sigari was going to get wise to that and step over into side control and progress. Yeah, he has been the one with a more stop, sort of. Stop! Oh, and referee starts, starts uh, sus, sus, sus. stops the action there, stands him up. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with the stop. Look up! Sigari momentarily thought the ref was coming for the peg. Oh, oh, he caught him! Again, landing those huge overhands. He may be on wobbly feet, and he's being caught here he by is. lefts and rights from Stregario. Desperation clinch from Marais. And again, he gets a takedown. That was a very smart low ankle, but right now, he's on the closed guard of Stregario. Stregario trying to work for an armbar. Decides to let it go. I mean, this could be what's needed now for Marais to sort of just turn this... Uh, Round into his. Needs to be Yeah, we gotta be careful though. He cannot leave an armor leg in very long. That's a nice elbow splitting the guard of Sugaru. Needs to be careful. He needs to decide if he's gonna be all the way down with the head and the chest or all the way up. He's perhaps guilty of being in what we call no man's land where you're neither all the way up and you're neither all the way down. And again, I think that just goes down to experience. I mean, it takes time to drill those positions to really understand when you're comfortable going between them. And, you know, at, at just uh, just one and oh, I mean, you can't necessarily expect that from Rish. Posturing up here. You can see Stregario trying to isolate an arm, perhaps may open up the guard. There and then follow up the oh, solid pass oh. from Marais. Maybe trying to sneak in the rear naked choke. He's not going to get yeah, He was a little bit, but he switches up. He might go for a dos or a guillotine. Let's see here. And somebody gets some shots landed off in the final 10 seconds. And those are smart little elbows from Marais. Stregario. Dangerously close to the back of the head. Stop! What a finish for that round from Sergio Maurice, really turning it around. I mean, from a brink of defeat, it looked like. He was on wobbly legs, and, I mean, he doesn't necessarily seem to be super fresh right now, but he sure as hell managed to, to salvage, uh, salvage that round, ended up in a great position, and I think also, I mean, he landed a couple good overhands yeah, as well. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, this is the very definition of a pendulous round. It's going to be a very difficult one to score because both men landed heavy shots. Both men landed ground and pound, and both men scored takedowns, so at this present time, I would not want to be a judge. Oh, I'm so glad we are not. <laughs> this was back and forth action by the very definition of those words. Here we see. Stregario in the ascendancy with those that telling hammer fists and just the the power he seems to generate on those is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it's surprising. You know, he doesn't necessarily have the most powerful frame of Seconds out. Been Seconds out. Relatively Seconds relaxed out. while in top Seconds position. Out. You know, he hasn't been too Seconds intense out. with his striking, but every single time that he, that he goes for ground and pound, it certainly works. And they always seen the the stand up and. Seconds out. Stregario momentarily keeping himself covered up, thinking the ref was coming at him, but... Yeah. If you look, both men, you know, they're wearing the fight a little bit more. That's round. And some kind of issue with Stregario's fight piece there, but... There we go, third and final round. I think it very much comes down to who wants it at this stage. Both men are tired. Both men have landed strikes on one another. This is really going to test their fortitude right now, Sebastian. Absolutely. And I feel... So far, just based on her body language, I do feel like Trigario is a slightly fresher fighter. Mm. Uh, I mean, with the build that uh, Marish has, you know, it takes time to really build up your cardio. Because, mm. I mean, sure, you can look at somebody and think, oh yeah, we're built like a tank, but the tanks don't necessarily have the best cardio. So, and that's also a thing that, you know, just comes with experience, learning how your body works. 
can see Strigario again trying to maintain that distance. May look to pop off that jab. Nice level changes again, trying to give as many looks as he can as Marais. Let's see if he can vamp up the action a little bit here. Nice job, I think the, the lead jab in the movement of uh, is what's causing problems. Every time Marais seems to charge in, he's getting caught with those long, rangy punches. And that is, you know, a testament to what I was saying before about knowing your body, knowing your range, knowing how to use it properly. Mm. I mean, it's giving, it's giving you so many problems. Because he is more tentative coming in with his striking as well. I mean, you know, it's, it's like what they say, the best, uh, the best defense is a good offense. And so far, Strigario is definitely a best one. It's almost like Strigario is walking back a little bit, almost looking more fatigued than he is to invite that advancing movement from his opponent to have those kind of strikes landed. I, I feel so. I feel like there have been a couple moments in the fight where he's almost faded my reach for some time. Good oh, shot. Oh, he heard him there. again. Came over the top with a big shot. So far, a very good round for Suyorio. And Marish kind of acknowledged that striking combination, basically gave him a little look, kind of like, yeah, you got me a little head nod there. What he has to do is he needs to get that head off the center line so that he's not a sitting target. It's okay moving the shoulders and moving the hips, but you need to get that head off the center line. Charge him with your punches, close the distance. That jab has been absolutely funny all night for Strigario. I mean, if it is the jab, is, oh wow, leaping right hook there from Sigario, misses, and certainly a change the picture of the fight. Wow, what a jab, snaps back the head of Sergio Grish. Yeah. It's a forced clench in, but because he's not setting those takedowns up, he's not setting in those shoots, Sigario can almost anticipate it, but somewhat telegraphed, he has the hands down ready yeah. to defend straight away. And I wonder if perhaps we'll see some kind of a defensive knee or something like that because we're having a couple times now where Misha's basically charged in for his takedowns. You know, he is telegraphing in for there, for example. He does not really get that properly. He's still on that single leg, but you can see. Strangario. Oh, may dive in for a leg. Nice may go for a toe hold. Can't quite get it. Needs to transition the legs a little bit lower if he's trying to get down for the knee bar. Because yeah. right now, he's in a position where he's not going to get full extension on that knee. Exactly. But from this position, you could see ground point again. Switches to try and get... Could be a potential calf slice here. Yeah. We are seeing calf slices more and more in MMA, I feel. I think it's something that it used to be... It used to be something here from Jiu-Jitsu. who used to be considered dirty to go for leg locks. But then with the, the rise of the likes of the Dana or Death Squad, you're seeing more people realize that it's such, such an important and underutilized aspect of grappling, especially within mixed martial arts. Absolutely, because there's just so many scrambles and situations where it truly is advantageous to go for a more unusual submission like that. Oh, yeah, but with great risk, you know, you're also putting yourself in a position where you're committing both your hands to a lower limb, leaving your face exposed to the head. Exactly. I was almost actually expecting Marish to perhaps uh, go for some almost backhanded strikes towards uh, Strigari over there when he was in a relatively safe position for the... Oh, well, spitting up blood there is the Transylvanian Marish. He usually goes the other way around. <laughs> Strigari was trying to get on in a Kimura here. The beautiful thing with the Kimura is Nick did seem to be on the spine a little bit. Needs to be careful with where he's yeah. landing those shots. Too, dangerously close to the spine. You can see that come away. Oh, he may have that come away. That looks tight, but may use it to transition. A la Frank Beer Noguera. Uses it to stand up instead. And wow, that was labeled from Marish, but he does manage to get Strigarius down. So he may not be as much faking as we think. I mean, he could just also be very tired as well. And again, you're talking about a three round fight and it, for a guy that's had two fights and a guy that's had one fight. Exactly. This is probably the deepest waters that either of these men have been dragged into. See Moraes finishing the fight on top, and to leave an exclamation point in the eyes of the judges, he really needs to rattle off some heavy ground point here. Ah! Uh, there it is, three rounds of action at RXF 38 here at Bucharest, Romania, and that fight for me, that's really on a knife edge, Sebastian. I think it all comes down to that second round. I think mm. I, I think we can give this third round to uh, to Maurice just because he, I mean. 
ended it so strongly. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's yeah. I'm just glad we're sitting in a position where we are, uh, where we're not tasked with scoring a fight. And they always say that fight had everything. Heavy shots landed. Some beautiful work on the ground with the wrestling submission attempts. And this was beautiful from Stragario. Had the Kimura, and it's such a versatile position that figure four grip. Not only can it be used for a submission, we've seen there he parlayed a submission into a transition attempt, which was beautiful yeah. and showed his savvy. Yeah, I think bo be definitely both guys showed uh, some truly good potential here. Uh, being this young in their careers, there's always room for improvement, but definitely good showing from both. And you can see our MC for the night, Mr. Lance Murdoch, tentatively making his way into the cage. And that can only mean one thing, that the judges have rendered their decision. Yeah, you know, Slowly but surely, here we go. There and we have it. For the first time tonight, for the official decision right after three center. rounds, our man in the middle, Mr. Lance Murdoch. Ladies and gentlemen, all three of our judges scored it 30 27 unanimously. To the blue corner, Fluin Stukayu!